What do we learn from the Beatles part one? After reading an interesting article from a guitar magazine some months ago, I posted on the, the blog uh, and a Beatles article all about the songwriting uh, secrets. And I thought it'd be interesting really to break that down and do it in short videos outlining a lot of the things that the Beatles did. Now, it was pretty obvious that the Beatles kind of led the way and were revolutionary at the time. Sometimes that kind of just gets seen as because of the, the psychedelic kind of music like Strawberry Fields, I'm a Walrus, the, the style, the changing styles through the 60s and maybe the, the attitudes and philosophies get seen as the groundbreaking things and what's missed is the actual chord progressions uh, and the songwriting secrets that the Beatles were incorporating right from the beginning. If we go back uh, in pop music, you know, you had the blues based music which is based on three chords. If you took the key of C for example, you'd have C, D, E, F and G, C, F and G. Them three chords. Still you are it today if you think of something like Fat Bottom Goes by Queen which is in the key of D, E, F, G and A. Which is based on that, three chords. Blues based music for example. Um, A, D, and A. A, B, C, D, and A. So it's M3 chords. Most popular music is based on four chords. If we take something like the key of C. Now, I don't want to get into the circle of fifths. I've done a video on that, so check that out. I don't want to get bogged down with that. But something like the key of C, which has the note C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C in it. If we arrange them chords, we'll have C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. Really the rule there with all the keys is the first, the fourth, and the fifth are major, all the rest are minor, the last one is diminished. Uh, if we arrange that into a minor key, C is relative to A minor, we start at A minor and work along with the same chords. Most pop songs are written around the first, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth chord. I think we've seen videos done, I think it was that Australian band where they played them, same four chords and did like something like ridiculous, like a thousand songs, all with them same four chords. And we see one of the first examples in the article I'm talking about, where it talks about happiness is a warm gun from a white album, which is C, A minor, F and G. see them same chords in Octopus's Garden. Um, I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Same chords. Uh, first, fourth, fifth and the sixth. Now on a song like Let It Be, it gets interesting. Uh, I'll play it through. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. So again, it's using the first, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, but when it goes to F, it changes to an F major seven, and then it does an F6. So in, the, in them situations, it's taking something pretty tried and tested and expanding on it. The Beatles did a lot more than just this, but we're looking at this concept. So if we take something like the key of C, we've outlined the C, the D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. Them chords can be altered again. So if we take something like C, we can alter that to C major 7. D minor can be turned to D minor 7. E minor can be turned to E minor 7. F can be turned to F major 7. A G can be turned to a G7. And an A minor can be turned to an A minor 7. And even the B diminished, which is sometimes written as B minor flat and fifth, can be turned to a B 
minor seven flat and fifth, which I don't want to get into it. It is more complicated things. But if we just take them chords. <laughs> Straight away got something a little bit more interesting than we did at first. And we could build a song picking out four chords out of that key. We could apply it to the key of G. If we look at the key of G, the key of G has the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. If we arrange them into um, chords, we have G, A minor, B minor, C. D, E minor, and F sharp diminished. So, turn the G into a G major 7, and A minor into an A minor 7, B minor 7, C major 7, D7, E minor 7. So straight away we've got a lot of um, room for manoeuvre if we're trying to write a song something that could end up being very very uh, interesting now one of the examples in the uh, the article about the Beatles was this chord progression in D I'll play it through it's in the key of D key of D uh, has the note D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp in it. The first, the fourth and the fifth are major, all the rest are minor, except the last one, C sharp, which is diminished. And it's changed, starting with a D, it's changed the B minor to a B minor 7, it's changed the E minor to an A minor 7, and it's changed the A to an A7. So that's just a little look at, check the article out because it's got millions of, well not millions, but lots of examples of Beatles songs that use different chord progressions and picking out four chords and changing them around for an interesting effect. And it means that if you were going to look at songs, you might look at them a bit differently because one of the, the troubles for a beginner is when he's trying to memorise songs, he's just memorizing abstract uh, letters out the alphabet with M's or major sevens written at the end of them um, and doesn't really know what he's aiming for. If you are able to see what key you are in and where the songwriter, what technique is using, makes it actually easier to remember the song. So I hope that helps you. Tomorrow I'll do part two where we'll be looking at even more tricks that uh, the Beatles used and as always thank you for watching.